What's going on, y'all? I hope that you're having a wonderful day. My name is Jonathan Yench, and thank you for tuning back into yet another video. As you can see behind me, we are currently in the beautiful mountains here in Los Angeles. This is one of my favorite camp spots ever. And the reason why we're here is today, I have a special video for you guys. Now, it is no surprise that I am a fan of coffee. Ooh! 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 Woo-hoo-hoo! Okay, maybe fan is an understatement. I, I love coffee, and one of my absolute favorite places to drink coffee is in the outdoors, and specifically while I'm camping. So today I'm gonna be talking a little bit about my personal favorite methods for brewing camp coffee and how you can elevate your next cup of camp coffee to bring it to the next level. Personally, one of the most important parts of camp coffee for me is simplicity. While I'm camping, I keep things simple. I eyeball pretty much everything. For the most part, I think that I get good cups of coffee every time. And the more you do it, the better you get at eyeballing, the more you know how to fine tune things in order for you to get a cup that you like. With that out of the way, let's just get started with my favorite methods of camp coffee Brewing. So the coffee that we are going to be using today is from the roaster Bean and & Bean. They're based out of New York City. <laughs> and they actually happen to be the sponsor of today's video, so shout out to them. They are a small family-owned roastery based out of New York City, and they have a strong focus in bringing gender equality to the world of coffee, and they are also partners with the Sloth, the Sloth Institute, whose mission is to save the sloths, so how rad is that? They are overall just a great company and I highly suggest checking them out if you get the chance. So the first method that I'll be talking about is by far the simplest and it is these instant specialty tea bags. They're made with steeped coffee, I think in collaboration. Steeped coffee is another brand, I believe. These are phenomenal. Instant coffee, so it's extremely simple. There's like no gear that you need other than your device to heat up water. These are gonna be great for people who don't want to lug around all this extra gear, but you still want to elevate your camp coffee game um, or if you're just too lazy to bring out all your fancy equipment or if you're backpacking if you're backpacking these are great because you just throw these into your pack they don't weigh anything and you got delicious coffee in the middle of the backcountry which is awesome pretty straightforward like I said it's 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 basically just a tea bag with coffee in it so I'll show you guys what that looks like one thing I would like to point out is that I'm using this fresh filtered water. Now tap water is, it's okay, but if you can, I would definitely use filtered water of some sort. Now just do as you would with a tea bag and I guess, you know, dunk it for about 30 seconds or so and either toss the bag if you don't want that strong of a cup of coffee or leave the bag for the entire time. I typically just leave the bag in because I think it provides a lot of good flavor as time passes, but it's up to you. Find out what your own personal preference is and adjust accordingly. Cheers. Oh, it's hot, 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 but so good. Woo. Man, it's pretty out here. What a beautiful day. All right, and moving on to method number two. This is gonna be one that a lot of you probably already know about, and that is the French press. This is a super, super easy and simple piece of gear. What we're gonna do is we're going to take some of these delicious Guatemala geisha beans from Bean & Bean Roasters. I am just going to use this scooper. This is a scooper that came with one of the other pieces of equipment that we'll be using. We'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But this, I, I think this holds about 20 grams of coffee, more or less. I just like to do one big heaping scoop of this guy. I'm gonna put that into the grinder and then I'm gonna add a little bit more because we're, well, we're camping, so why the hell not, right? So for a French press, you wanna use kind of a coarse grind if you have the 
luxury of choosing your grind size. If not, it's totally fine. Use whatever the hell works for you. Grind it up if you're doing it fresh while you're camping, but if not, then you're just gonna skip this step altogether. Oh, before I start grinding this, we might as well multitask and get the water heated up while we grind the coffee. I always like to do that just to save a little bit of time. Boom, boom. You know, surprisingly, it's a pretty good workout. Your shoulders start to get a little sore. Your elbows feel it. It's starting to heat up too. I might have to take off my jacket pretty soon. Coffee is done and the water's still heating up. Now you could and you probably should preheat your vessel with hot water or camping. I don't really care. It's gonna taste good either way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the grounds right into the French press. That's ready to go. So as you can see, that's a pretty coarse grind that we've got going on here. The water's cooled off a little bit. Let's go ahead and pour this into the French press. With the French press, I am going to do a 15 to 30 second bloom. Now, if you don't know what this is, you're basically just coating all of the coffee grounds in some water. And that is essentially letting gases escape from the coffee and it's just gonna provide a little bit better of a taste. I think it's been long enough. Let's just go ahead and pour the rest back in. Now, we're just gonna let this sit and chill out, do its thing, probably about three to four minutes. Uh, I'm not gonna set a timer because we're camping, so I'm just gonna go about my business for a little bit and we'll check back in on this in a couple minutes. One thing I forgot to do before letting it sit for a while bit is give it a stir, and so I'll just give it a stir right now. And now it is ready to plunge. Just like that, we got a French press. Woo! This is already my third cup of coffee and I still got at least one more to go, maybe a couple extra because I need to get some cool B-roll shots of me making more coffee. So that might require even more cups of caffeine to be drank. Hey, I'm not mad. I love my job. This is, who, who, who else gets to drink coffee for their job? Well, I mean, some people do, but how many get to do it in a beautiful place like this? Mm -hmm. And that is going to bring us to our last camp coffee brewing method that I have for you today. And this is gonna be the most complicated out of all of the three that I'm showing you, but it's still extremely simple. It doesn't really require much gear. And that is the AeroPress. Essentially it is a, it acts kind of like a, I guess technically it's like an espresso brewing method because you're pressurizing hot water through coffee grounds to do the extraction. So in that sense, it's espresso, but realistically you're getting an actual like cup of coffee. I think it's like a eight or 10 ounce cup. But anyways, these are the pieces that comes with a plunger, chamber, this little filter holder, and the scoop, and that's it. Let's get to brewing. So for the AeroPress, again, we're just gonna use, if I could open the bag, I'm just gonna use the little scoop that it came with. I'm probably gonna use about the same that I did for the French press. You know, one heaping scoop out of this, supplemented by a few more smaller scoops. And the difference between this and the French press is you're gonna want to, if possible, have a finer coffee grind. It's getting way too hot. I'm literally starting to sweat in this jacket. Hand cranking coffee is no joke, y'all. So the AeroPress has its own filters. Um, it comes with some, but then once you run out, you could get like a pack of a hundred and it will last you forever. It might even be more than a hundred. I don't, I don't know, I forget now. I've had this pack for so long. So one important step that you don't wanna forget with the AeroPress is you wanna pre-wet the filter. The reason you're doing this is just to get all of the like nasty paper flavors out of your coffee. So you just run a little bit of the hot water through it, you know, soak it, get it nice and wet. Here we go. So you wanna put the plunger, kind of hard to explain in video, but you just kind of like wedge it into the, the chamber like that and it should stick pretty easily. Set that down, pour that in. Now you just fill that up with hot water. The water has cooled a little bit after boiling, so it's not like 100% boiling water. We're just gonna pour that in. Give that a stir. Some people say six stirs counterclockwise or four stirs clockwise and then two counterclockwise. Just stir the coffee, you know. 
we're camping, it's not gonna make a huge difference. And now I'm just gonna hang out and let that brew for about a minute and a half, I think. Minute and a half, yeah, minute and a half. We're not we're not timing it specifically. I'm just gonna, the AeroPress, you might actually want to use a timer. I don't know, I'm still gonna just kind of go by, go by feel here. So I'll let you know if the coffee cup comes out good enough. Okay, it's been about a minute and a half, give or take, because I'm just using my little watch here. So we're gonna give that one more stir, counterclockwise, clockwise, doesn't matter to me. The little filter clips right onto the end of the chamber here, and we're just gonna flip that. Oh no, we're spilling. Oh well, it's okay. And you just gently push down on the plunger. Now, you don't wanna go too quickly. You wanna, you know, give it consistent pressure that will take about a minute or so to plunge. Here's the best part, here's the best part. Listen for it, listen for it. And that is how you do a French prep, an AeroPress. That's how you do an AeroPress. Whoo-wee! That is definitely the best cup of coffee out of all three of those in my opinion. It's a lot brighter in flavor, it's juicier, and it's just very delightful. It's extremely, extremely delightful. Mm. This is, this is the go-to right here, the AeroPress guys. Hands down the winner. But the other two are all right too. Not all right, they're really good as well. All right guys, and those are my three favorite camp coffee brewing methods. Hopefully you gained a little bit of knowledge from this video and you're able to elevate your next cup of camp coffee. Once again, thanks to the sponsors, Bean and Bean Coffee Roasters. If you're interested in checking out their tasty beans or maybe some of their cool sloth merchandise, I will be leaving a link in the description box down below. That's going to be the end of the video. Thank you guys, like always, for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, maybe even consider subscribing. You guys go out there and go on some adventures of your own. Live life. <laughs> Beat the status quo. You already know the drill. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.